In this video, I'm going to show you how I adjusted the shift point on my new SRAM Automatics Hub. I got this hub on Amazon for about $76, and it's the freewheel version rather than the coaster brake version since I have good brakes on my bike and I also like to back pedal for balance. This hub is the 36 spoke hole freewheel version. It came with an 18 tooth cog on the drive side. It fits my Bianchi San Jose when I use the included spacers. It should also fit a 120 millimeter dropout as well. Eventually I'm going to build a new wheel for my Bianchi San Jose, but right now it has a 38 tooth chain ring in the front and a 16 tooth gear on the back. My comfortable cadence range is between 70 and 90, but my average commuting speed is only 12 to 13 miles per hour. This means that I'm spending a lot of my commute time in a less than ideal cadence range, and I also don't have much gear capacity for higher speeds. Before I built the wheel around the hub, I needed to find out what speed this Automatics hub was going to shift at. I felt like the best way to figure this out was to set up the hub on my bike and do a test. I knew that this bike computer was calibrated perfectly for my wheel size, so I found a way to mount the sensor to the Automatics hub for a functional test. I found out that this hub shifts into the second gear between 11 and 12 miles per hour on my bike. After determining the shift point, I charted out the cadence at each speed with the automatics as it came out of the box. The automatics hub has an 18th tooth cog, so with a 38 chain ring and a 1 to 1 ratio, I got a better first gear. However, before I'm able to hit an efficient cadence on the first gear, the second gear kicks in at about 11 miles per hour and puts my knees back in the grind zone. Before you consider doing this, keep in mind that spare parts may not be easily available in your area, and there are small components that may be damaged easily. Even though I didn't have the right tools for the job, I was able to get the lock nuts off from the non-drive side without any issues. Once I removed the cap, the hub body slid right off. Be careful to try and keep this cluster together because there are some small pieces that you don't want to lose. Only one of these weights had the spring underneath it and the weight is retained by a retaining clip. When removing the retaining clip, keep in mind that it's very small, fragile, and will jump right off of that pin. Do what you can to keep from losing it. Once the retaining clip was off, I could pull the weight out by rotating it a bit. The spring had one finger underneath the plate, but it was pretty easy to remove. Once the spring was out, I had to figure out what way to bend it. To figure that out, I had to look at the hub's function. As the speed increases, the centrifugal force causes the weights to want to stick out, which ultimately causes the hub to shift. I wanted the shift point to be at a higher speed, which means I wanted to make it more difficult for the weights to stick out. I used an Allen wrench to try and keep the spring from warping, then unwound the spring till I saw a change in the resting position of the arms. Once I was happy with the spring's shape, I placed it back on the pin with one arm under the plate. Then I put the weight back on the pin, ensuring the spring's arms were coiled on the weight to provide the tension needed to function. I put the plastic mechanism back on at this point, although I could have waited till after the retaining clip was on. The retaining clip was tricky because it was so small that it was hard to position. In my case, I wasn't very careful removing it and the clip was slightly warped. Once I reshaped the clip with pliers, it fit in just fine. Before I put the hub back together, I made sure the bearings were seated properly. I did the same for the cap before placing it on the non-drive side of the hub. I threaded the first lock nut back on the axle using just finger tightness to ensure I wasn't crushing the bearings. I 
I held the first nut in place while I torqued the second nut to the first one. I attached the hub back to the bike to check the function. This time, the hub shifted at around 14 to 15 miles per hour. As you can see, the new shift point allows me to stay within my preferred cadence zone at my average pace of 12 to 13 miles per hour. The second gear will kick in just as I'm hitting the downhill section of my commute, and I won't be spinning out if I want to race down the hill.